food to take in to add lean muscle tissue is protein. A lot of times we don't take enough protein. For every 100 calories of protein you consume, you're gonna burn off 25 calories just by digesting it. So that's how amazing it is when you're increasing your protein and you're gonna boost your metabolism. I mean, not a lot of people count like how much protein you take in throughout the day, but the best way to go about it is to simply just take some type of protein in every single meal, whether that's chicken, fish, egg whites. The more protein you eat, the more your body's gonna use that to burn fat through digestion, but also you're gonna increase muscle tone and increase your metabolism long term. So the other thing about protein is it digests extremely slow, so it's gonna keep you full for a longer period of time. High protein takes about three hours to digest. So when you're taking your protein, you're gonna be full for a longer period. So by not taking your protein throughout the meal, you're gonna start breaking down muscle tissue. At the same time, you're gonna get uh, hungrier a lot quicker. So these are the best proteins that I recommend for my clients to take. Chicken breast, turkey breast, fish and seafood, low-fat dairy products, low-fat cottage cheese is phenomenal for that, even fat-free cheese, whey protein powder. If you notice, I don't recommend a lot of red meat. There's nothing wrong with red meat, but if you know, you're taking a lot of fat with it, it's gonna be counteractive in terms of your fat loss goals. Um, actually, I was having a conversation with Herb today, and he was discussing that um, he's doing a lot of studies on red meat, and most of the red meat that you buy in the supermarket, it's terrible, it's processed, and there's a lot of hormones in there, but you wanna get grass-fed organic red meat, because a lot of times, um, it has much less fat, it doesn't have all those crazy hormones, and all the crazy things you get in uh, you know, supermarket, highly processed red meat, but if you're gonna have red meat, try to shoot for grass-fed red meat. When you're not, uh, when you're increasing your protein intake, it's very important to drink more water because the more protein you take in, you tend to get more dehydrated and water's another factor in your metabolism. So a lot of times, um, you might feel a slight bit of dehydration because our bodies are actually 70% water. And if you're 5% dehydrated, it's very bad for your body. So meaning that if you even feel thirsty, that means you're dehydrated. You have to be like proactive with your water intake. So a lot of people ask me, what is the optimal amount of water to take in? Well, it's very simple, you do a little test, you just pee, and if your pee is clear, you're fully hydrated. A lot of times, if it's outside of that color, it means you need to take in more water. And that's very difficult to do because, you know, a lot of times you're working, you can't make it to the bathroom, and you can't just pound down the water, but it's just something you have to build towards because the more water you take in, the better your body's gonna process it. So it's just something you have to increase, but if you're increasing your protein intake, increase your water at the same rate. And another important thing is when you're exercising to boost your metabolism is doing supersets. Now, a superset is simply doing exercises back to back, meaning taking minimal rest periods because you're building muscle at the same time, and you're also getting a cardiovascular fat burn. So with my clients, I believe in taking very minimal rest periods and just doing a lot of action, just keeping the heart rate up, but resting as, you know, maybe five, 10 seconds at a time. Supersetting is gonna basically have two exercises that are paired together. You know, one of the best ways to do it is basically pick like an exercise that's uh, opposite or an antagonist. So let's say you're doing a pushing movement, you do a pulling movement at the same time. It's not really good to do the same muscle group back to back, but let's say you do an upper body, lower body, supersets are very important. So by doing that, you're gonna increase your metabolism, but also increase the fat burning aspect of your workout. And you know, the great thing is, in the um, hour that you work out, you're gonna get a lot more accomplished. And one of the best ways to do it is, you know, it's taking in the minimum effective dose where you're basically going to the gym, burning the most amount of calories, increasing the most amount of muscle in the shortest amount of time. Supersetting helps you accomplish that. Because sometimes when you rest too long, your heart rate goes back to normal and you're not getting the fat burning benefit from it. So it's also really good if you're busy. Let's say for example, if you only have one or two days to dictate to exercising, a great one and a half hour superset of just hitting all the body parts is a great way to just get in the gym. So it's also very good in terms of that. And um, along with that, the fourth tip is really interval training because interval training means doing exercise and then taking a short rest, slowing out a heart rate for a slight bit and then going back. And there was a lot of different studies done. Uh, 
what type of cardio burns the most fat? Because a lot of times people think that the more cardio I do, the more fat I burn. Well, that's completely wrong because if a person goes, let's say, uh, on a treadmill for an hour and they're doing very slow cardio, studies have shown that it slows down metabolism. So what you want to do is do intervals, meaning you do a fast-paced cardio round with a short rest. And there was a, a Japanese scientist named Izumi Tabata, and he went out to see what is the most effective cardio known to mankind. So he had people do an hour of slow cardio, 30 minutes of fast cardio, fast, slow, all different types. And there's actually an interval, and it's called the Tabata interval. And it's very simple, 20 seconds of super intense activity followed by 10 second rest. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. That is the most effective fat loss cardio known to mankind. That is very difficult to do because you have to go 20 seconds as hard as possible and then kind of cruise for 10. After four or five of those rounds, you're completely exhausted and depleted. But the more you do it, the more fat you're gonna burn and the more effective you're gonna be. So doing, let's say, 10 Tabata rounds, which takes about five minutes, is gonna be more effective than doing 20 minutes of regular cardio. So just keep that in mind, how effective interval cardio is. And the more studies that come out about interval cardio, the more effective they see that it is. So you don't have to do it as intense as that, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, that's pretty hard to build up to. But even if you could do, let's say, for one minute, 40 at moderate and then 20 at slow, or 20 super fast, 40 moderate, that's fine as well, as long as you're shocking your body. Because to get your metabolism operating at a high speed, you have to constantly shock it. So if you just go slow all the time or fast, you're gonna, in a sense, burn yourself out. So you have to constantly keep it guessing, give it unique different things in terms of cardio, and then we're gonna go more into the nutritional aspects of it. But basically, try to implement some type of interval the next time we do cardio. So let's say if you're tired and you just wanna walk on a treadmill or just go on a bike, Let's say you want to do 30 minutes. The first minute, just go as fast as possible. Go into a sprint, kind of just shock the body, and then from that point on, you can cruise. But the more you do intervals, the more effective you're going to have fat loss and the faster your metabolism is going to be. So basically, like I said, 20 seconds would be the best of super high intensity, and then you do like the same type of rest period 20 on, 10 off. So just keep that in mind. And, um, you just kind of switch it around because it, it all depends on your own personal satisfaction because the 2010 is extremely difficult and if you get through 10 rounds, I'll be very impressed. It's very difficult, but you want to kind of ease into that. So try 20 seconds intense, 40 seconds off, but build up eventually to that. But like I said, it'll be a lot more effective because in five minutes, you'll burn more fat than 20 minutes of regular cardio. And um, this is probably the best way to increase your metabolism. And most people don't know about it and they're too scared to do it. It's called the refeed, okay? So pretty much we all go on diets and we stay on diets for long periods of time. And what happens is the body gets accustomed to it. So we hit that, that terrible trap of having to eat less and less calories to lose more weight or having to exercise more and more. So the metabolism, gets damaged because it's not working at optimal capacity. So a refeed is one of the best ways to boost your metabolism because a refeed is basically shocking your body in a very extreme way. Because let's say, for example, a person has to take in 1,200 calories to lose weight or to maintain their weight, and they're just going 1,200 calories for a long period of time, their body becomes accustomed to that. And the problem with that is that a person is too scared to go any higher because if you're dieting, you just wanna go lower and lower and lower and you're gonna to be too scared to eat a lot more food. But that's exactly what a refeed is. A refeed is actually taking in a boatload of calories and carbs at the same time to reset your metabolism. Basically, when you're taking the low calories, like I said, your body accommodates to it by slowing down your metabolism because so many times people think that once they cut their calories down to 800, 600, 500, they're gonna lose weight but it's gonna be a point of no return because there's only so much you can cut and you can't just go into eating air and exercising seven days a week. You're gonna you know, get sick or possibly just go into exhaustion. And basically, refeeding allows your metabolism, your thyroid to fully reset. And basically, 
It's like, you know, our ancestors, when they were out in the plains and hunting, food wasn't as accessible. You couldn't just go into your cupboard and get something. You had to go out there and actually hunt or find berries and, you know, get wild animals. So we would go on for longer and longer periods without eating. So the body adjusts by slowing down the metabolism because the slower your metabolism is, the more it hoards fat. Because as a survival mechanism, when you're dieting or crash dieting, you're just forcing the body to hoard fat because if you just cut your calories down, it's not gonna get rid of fat at a proper pace. So what you have to do is kind of do the opposite of starving and um, basically you have to take in as much calories as you can in one sitting. And pretty much it's tricking your body thinking the diet's over because if you stay in a diet for a long period of time, your body's gonna be accustomed to a certain caloric intake. And once you increase it, for a short period of time, especially from high carb foods, there's a hormone called leptin that in a sense gets tricked. And once that leptin level is restored back to normal, you start burning fat with the same amount of food that you're eating. Because when you're starving yourself, you're dying for a large period of time, your leptin levels decrease and that's a bad thing. So by doing a refeed, basically you're gonna see a lot more progress with the same amount of food that you're doing. Only problem is, most people are too scared to do that because it involves taking a lot of food, mainly from carbohydrates, but it's very, very important. So that's like one thing I'm gonna tell you guys. If you're following the same diet and it's kind of hitting a plateau, you're not getting to where you wanna go and you're just seeing yourself cutting down more and more and more, then it's time to do a refeed. The best way to do it is to take in extremely high carbohydrate foods because high carb foods really get your thyroid to start working again. It speeds up your metabolism. And also at the same time, it's very psychologically fulfilling because the foods that we really do enjoy are high carb, high sugar foods. So the best refeeds involve taking in a lot of carbohydrates and keeping your fat intake as low as possible. So a lot of the foods that are like fat free are perfect for that because there's no fat and there's extremely high carbohydrates. And um, Basically, you do this for one day. Just one day, 24 hour period. So like, you wake up in the morning, you have pancakes, you have all the bread you desire. For dinner, you just have pasta. Just take it as much as you can. It's also, like I said, a big mental benefit because you're